We're ditching the textbooks today and exploring how film, yes film, can be a powerful tool for language learning. It's amazing what we can learn when we least expect it, right? Mm. We think about language and immediately our brains go to grammar rules, vocabulary lists, the things we should be doing. But the truth is, sometimes the most powerful learning experiences happen organically through things we enjoy. That's what this deep dive is all about, uncovering the hidden potential in everyday experiences. And today, we're taking a fascinating look at a research study that uses film not just for entertainment, but as a springboard for language exploration. And not just any film, we're talking about 42. The Jackie Robinson story. Powerful film, powerful subject matter. Exactly. The researchers wanted to see how a film like this, with its rich themes of social justice and historical significance, could be used to spark language learning in a high school English class. Okay, so we've got high schoolers, we've got 42. Set the scene for us. Where does language learning actually come into play? So picture this. A high school English class in Sweden. They've just finished watching 42, and now they're divided into groups. Sounds like a typical film study session. But here's where things get interesting. Instead of just quizzing them on the plot or having them write a standard essay, the teachers gave each group open-ended discussion questions. Focusing on? Discrimination, specifically how it was portrayed in the film. The idea was to spark critical thinking and get them talking, really dissecting the nuances of the story and the characters. So using the film as a launching pad for deeper conversation, but how does that translate into actual language learning? That's where the magic of co-narration comes in. Co-narration, that's a new one. What is that exactly? Think about how you discuss a film with friends. You might jump back and forth between scenes, someone finishes another person's sentence, you're recalling details, almost reliving the experience together. It's like collaborative storytelling, each person adding their own piece to the puzzle. Precisely. And that's what the researchers found happening in the student groups. As they were busy co-narrating, trying to piece together their shared experience of the film, something really fascinating started to happen. So they're getting really into it, really trying to reconstruct the story as a group. Where does the language learning come in? Well, as they were talking, right, they would inevitably run into these little language hurdles. Like what? Like uh, forgetting a word. Or maybe they knew the word in Swedish, but not in English. Uh, that makes sense. It happens to the best of us. Right. It's like you're trying to express this idea. You know it's in there somewhere, but the language just isn't cooperating. I've been there. It's frustrating. Oh, absolutely. But here's the thing. Instead of getting stuck or switching back to Swedish, these students instinctively started helping each other out. Wow. So it's like peer-to-peer -peer language tutoring happening right there in the middle of their film discussion. Exactly. Yeah. The researchers call this collaborative attention work, or CAW. Basically, it's this process of working together to overcome language obstacles in the moment. Okay, that makes sense. Do you have an example of the CAW in action? Yeah, so there's this one scene, right, where Jackie Robinson gets spiked in the ankle. Really nasty play. One student was trying to describe it, talking about how badly injured his foot was, but he couldn't think of the English word for... Uh, for what, like sprain? Yeah, sprain. That's exactly it. Right. And right then, another student just chimes in with sprained. And just like that, the conversation continues. I love that. It's like having a built-in language support system. But I imagine these moments went beyond simple vocabulary, right? They were grappling with some pretty complex themes in that film. You're right. It wasn't just about individual words. Sometimes the challenge was finding the right language to talk about the film's bigger ideas. Okay, I'm curious. Give me an example. Well, there was this one instance where they were trying to discuss the petition. You know, the one some of the Dodgers players circulated because they didn't want Jackie on the team. Oh, right, right. The one branch, Ricky, the Dodgers general manager just shuts down. Yes, exactly. So the students understood how important this petition was, but they were struggling to find the right word for it in English. It's a pretty specific term, too, petition. Not something you'd use every day. And that's what's so interesting. The moment one student offered up the word petition, it unlocked something for the entire group. Suddenly, they could articulate their thoughts about this key plot point in a much more nuanced way. And I bet that student felt pretty good, too, like they'd really contributed something. Absolutely. It's about those aha moments, you know, where the right word just clicks and unlocks a deeper level of understanding. And what's fascinating is that the researchers found this happening again and again. These moments of collaborative attention work weren't just helping students improve their English. They were also pushing them to engage with the film on a much deeper level. So it's not just language learning. It's about enriching the entire film analysis process. Exactly. 
and it makes you wonder, how often do we miss out on these opportunities because we're so focused on getting the language right? that we forget to just dive in and have fun with it. That's a great point. It's like we're so afraid of making mistakes that we forget that mistakes are often the best way to learn. Precisely. And this study really highlights that. These students weren't afraid to stumble, to help each other out. And in the process, they ended up learning and understanding so much more than they probably would have otherwise. This is so fascinating. But I have to ask, how do we take this, this collaborative attention work from a classroom in Sweden uh. and apply it to like our own lives? You know, it's all about shifting our perspective a little. We get so used to thinking about movies as passive entertainment. We sit back, we watch, and then we move on. Right, but it doesn't have to be that way. Not at all. Next time you watch a film with friends, turn it into a conversation. Don't just quote your favorite lines. Really dissect them. Why did that character say that? What was the director trying to convey in that scene? So like a mini film analysis session with friends. Exactly. And if you want to use it as a language learning tool, even better. Watch a film in the language you're learning. Pause it, rewind it, try to recreate the dialogue. Don't worry about being perfect. Just have fun with it. That's such a good point. The more we enjoy the process, the more we actually learn. 100%. This study isn't just about language learning. It's about finding joy in unexpected places. It's about connecting with others, sharing experiences, and realizing that sometimes the most powerful learning moments happen when we're not even trying.